Okay, so lift off. Um, we're going to start by shading the sphere. Um, this is a model, and also this is a model. Um, and we even have a real photo of a real sphere. All right, um, so we do want to capture this idea of the reflected light down here on the very edge of the sphere, um, right across from or next to, however you want to think of it, this cast shadow. Um, we're going to be placing our highlight more like this one over here. Um, and then in the middle here, we're going to have our darkest values, so our five or black maybe the four, um, the five to four to maybe three to two down here on the shadow. Um, in here, our bright white, our one. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start this off. Um, so, let me zoom in just a little. Okay. All right, so we're going to actually start with the negative space. So I'm going to use one of my darker pencils, 2 or a 4B, um, and I'm going to get right here to the outside of the sphere along this shadow. So this will be the darkest part of my drawing or one of so this may look like I'm kind of outlining, but what I'm really doing, um, the beginning of a buffer zone right outside the line, or right outside the circle. Um, and then we're going to go ahead, we're going to make this a little bit wider. So I, do, I call this a buffer zone so that um, this gives us um, a little bit of room to make mistakes, basically. That's why I call it a buffer zone. All right, so we start just by following the edge. Once we have a little bit of room to prevent us from making mistakes, um, then I'm actually going to start shading more side to side. Um, and we're going to go side to side because though this is a shadow, but when we're shading a shadow, what we're really shading is the surface the shadow is on. So this table is horizontal. We want to use these horizontal lines to make the table feel like it's lying down. All right. And as we shade, we can gradually get a little bit lighter. These are really small, so we want to have these marks that I'm making, maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch long an outline here now at all. Um, if you do that, sometimes people will do this and they'll create like a really dark buffer zone that just looks like an extra thick outline. You do not want to do that. You want to make sure that if you're changing the value that you're doing that nice and gradually. I wanted to make that just a little bit darker since that is going to be one of the darkest areas of our drawing. And then getting even a light gray as we get to the edge here. Now, one thing I didn't stop to do, but you might want to do before this, actually erase this outline around the shadow because shadows do not have outlines. All right, so erase that. You're just going to go right up to where that outline used to be, but we want to create what I call a soft edge here. So, um, the ball is a physical object. It's got a hard edge. We want this edge to look really um, crisp and clean. But here, the shadow is not a physical form, and we want it to have not such a hard, precise edge. We want it to be soft. All right, so I did that by kind of making these horizontal lines and making them not really quite, quite add up. Okay, and we can then accentuate that a little bit more by taking a piece of paper towel. Um, so I've got a small piece of paper towel here, and I'm going to fold it in half. Right? 
until it's pretty thick and then I'm going to kind of make it a triangle. So this is a pretty thick paper towel, so I can make it a triangle, let's say there. It's just making a triangle at that corner. So the smaller the piece of paper towel, the smaller, the pointier you can make that triangle, um, the more of a point you'll have to make your shading really precise. I think mine actually does need to be folded one more time. Okay, so here we go. Now we're, I'm not going to let this go over this edge, all right? I'm not touching the paper there. This is what we don't want to do is this. What I do want to do is this. We want that to be a nice hard edge. If I start to shade across it like that, it's going to be blurry. All right, now on this outside of the shadow, we, we want it to be blurry, so we can go across that edge. All right, so I was using a dark pencil there, a 4B, so that really spreads that graphite out as I'm blending it. So watch out if you do that when you wanna leave something lighter, you're gonna be in trouble. So, okay. We got that soft edge on there and we already had a gradation and now it's just a little bit smoother even than it was. Um, but notice it was smooth to start. You can't just blend out all the mistakes. You have to have a smooth gradation to start with. Okay, um, so I've got another paper towel here and I'm going to use that, put that underneath my hand as I continue to shade. All right, um, I'm actually going to keep going in the negative space now. So I'm going to shade above the table line. So this space above the table is a little bit darker where the table itself is catching the light. And just outside this edge of the circle. And if you did have to fix the circle a little bit, this is the perfect time to make sure that you have that fixed really nicely. So starting out, just following the edge. So again, just creating this buffer zone. I'm still making this pretty dark, so I'm using my 4B. I'm taking that down to the line of the table. When I get to the table, again, I'm, I want this buffer zone, so I would shade side to side, following the edge of the table. Be really careful there where the two meet. You're changing directions there. I do like to turn my paper a lot as I draw, just to get the best angle to make the shading feel the most natural to my hand. As I come down over here, I want to make sure again that I carefully get that edge of the table. The buffer zone again. Once I have that buffer zone, I'm going to again make my shading go side to side of the sphere. Um, it can create, I don't know, sort of a, a funny looking halo effect sometimes. So sometimes. So I'm going to shift to moving side to side here. So starting out fairly dark. And again, I want to make sure this all kind of blends together. I'm going to stop and sharpen my pen so that I can really make this very precise. If you have a dull pencil, you won't be able to get a really precise line, especially working at this scale. I should say precise edge, because that's really what we're doing here is an edge, not an outline. Right, so just making sure that we started out dark and that we're carrying out that dark value for a bit before we start getting a little bit lighter. 
You want that transition to be nice and smooth. And eventually, I can switch to using our graphite stick. So if you have one of those, once you have enough kind of extra space up here, this graphite stick is just same material as the pencil. This is a 2B value. Um, but no casing. So this is like using the side of your pencil, but the side of your pencil now is a lot bigger, so it can cover a lot more ground, a lot faster. Oops, oops, I had something underneath my paper there that made that spot. Um, it does have a slightly different texture to it, so I want to make sure that I overlap these areas. So I am making sure to go over this area where I did my pencil point so that I'm creating this seamless transition. So I'm going to take this all the way up to tone that whole page. Um, so my transition is not seamless yet, so I would go back to that using my pencil to fill in. So, and you can come back to this later. You don't have to necessarily do this all in one pass. But I'm shading side to side over top of the area that I've also toned with the graphite stick. So I'm just blending those two areas now, making that transition more seamless. Um, and my graphite stick was a little bit lighter than my pencil I was using, so I want to make sure that that transition in value happens gradually. So nice, small, controlled marks. So even as I go fast, I'm keeping these marks small. I'm keeping them just going side to side. You don't want to see scribbly mess happening. Um, and eventually we will make this kind of blend in with more of the background over here. But for now, we're just shading in this one area. So we'll just leave that be. Um, you can, once you think you've got a pretty good transition happening, um, then you can switch to um, blending with your blending tool. So again, I'm going to put this extra piece of paper towel underneath my hand. As I'm blending, I want to make sure that I don't cross over this edge here. No crossing over the edge. I'm just starting near that edge and then blending up and away. So that's looking okay for now. I can go back and revisit that and 
Maybe go over some of these areas, make sure that these are nice and seamless. Make sure that this transition is happening smoothly. Might go over some of this again with our graphite stick. Again, just making sure that that we've got a slow change in value. All right. So I would keep going over this as much as I needed to, but I can also come back to this and continue to touch that up at the end. All right, so now I'm going to work on the actual um, sphere itself. So we want to save this circle right here as our white area. Um, our darkest area is going to be right around here. Um, and then we're going to have some lighter values here and here as we get near to that white area. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my 2B pencil here. So I'm going to shade with the direction of the sphere. So I'm going to be shading basically in what would be a full circular shape up until I get again to this area. So there will be a little bit of very light gray up here right next to the edge of the sphere here. Um, you could also potentially, it can be a little bit hard to get this smooth sometimes with the pencil. You could use your graphite stick. Okay. Um, and then we also have another secret weapon here. We got this blending tool dirty. We can actually use that to help us shade as well. So I'm going to go right up to the edge here. I'm not going over this edge. I want to keep this edge nice and crisp, but we made a point on it on our blending tool so that we could get right up to that edge really precisely without going over it. And we can take that right up and around where we're going to want the highlight. So let's say we want our highlight here. We can create that soft edge. Um, so I am going to need a little bit, a little bit more value. So I could do that again. With our graphite stick or if I'm using my pencil I'm starting to get a little bit lighter here so maybe I'm transitioning to a lighter pencil and I'm using I'm using marks that curve around it would curve all the way around like so. Going even all the way up to this edge right next to it. Over here, I do want to get all the way up to this edge. So here next to the shadow, we're going to have the ball be lighter. But here next to the table, the ball is going to be darker than the table around it. So I'm getting right up to that edge there and shading in from that edge. And then we can continue to shade 
and let this be just a light gray up here. Right. Same thing is going to happen over here, where here we're going to have lighter sphere, darker shadow on the table, but then right next to that, the edge of the sphere will become the darker one, moving in. So you want to make sure that this happens seamlessly there. So I'm making sure that here you've got the crisp edge with the darker part on the outside and here we're getting right up to that edge and shading in from that edge. Okay, I'm seeing a little part there where the table line went into the sphere, so I'm getting rid of that. Just tickling the surface here with my lightest pencil. I seem to have misplaced my HB pencil, so the number two pencil though is the equivalent, same thing. Okay. And then up here, we can continue around this very, very light gray, coming all the way up here just behind that highlight, like so. Out here, you can again be using this side of the pencil for the pencil point, and I'm creating these marks that are curving around, curving around, curving around, curving around, curving, 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 all the way up to here. And we don't want to have, again, we don't want to have a hard edge. We want this to be a soft edge. So our goal is not to have a really hard edge here at all, but we're going to make this soft. So again, I can come in here with my blending tool, and we want this to be dirty, and we want to go right up and around where that highlight is going to be. So we can also get it over here. I'm just moving my paper towel so it stays underneath my hand as I do this. Getting right up to that edge but not crossing over. Right up to the edge but not crossing over. Right up to the edge but not crossing over. So darker areas will appear to go back in space, so these curving objects are going back in space as they curve. So even at this lighter side, we have just a bit of shadow at the edge. Okay, and just, again, really soft edge at that, at that highlight. Um, we do want to make sure that, again, we have shading all the way up to this edge. So just as I'm turning this, I'm putting my hand over the paper towel, and I'm getting all the way up to this edge. All the way up to this edge. all the way up to that edge, all the way up to that edge. All right. Let's take this edge over here. So 
we do want to make sure again that we don't have these transitions happening too fast so if these are happening a little bit too fast i can get back in there and make sure so i'm shading sort of on that edge where it goes from dark to lighter curving just adding a little bit more shading down there and again we're making this kind of transition here where it gets darker lighter part lighter darker on that side lighter on the sphere darker next to it darker on the sphere lighter next to it so when you're just trying to make that a seamless transition there Um, so just because you have the reflected light here doesn't mean that it's white. It's just a light to medium gray there. And again, you may need to get a little bit darker on this central part. So maybe I could do that. I could do that again with my pencil here. And my graphite stick. But make sure this is looking as if it would just keep circling around. You don't want it to kind of cut off suddenly here or here. You want it to look like it would just keep circling around. Um, now, if any of this gets too dark, or if I get too much of a hard edge here, um, I would need to use my eraser. Um, so, if you want to erase but not have a hard edge, you're going to kind of stipple with your eraser. Then, if you need to blend that out and make that more of a subtle transition. Now, remember, I have my blending tools very dark. That's just going to add pigment. If we want this to stay light, we've got to blend with a different part of the blending tool. So I can unfold it, refold it. And now I'd be ready to blend the part where I want it to stay light. So we've got a pretty smooth looking sphere here. So I could go back and I could touch up. I could make sure that this Transition here is happening really smoothly. I'm going in now with my ebony pencil because I feel like I just need it a little bit darker than I was getting. So I'm just continuing to add shading, little marks, little marks, keeping these controlled, either going with this curve or then at a certain point, you can come out side to side until we really, really feel like we have this as smooth as we can. All right, so that part is looking pretty good. We can always come back and, you know, perfect it later on, too.